I want to talk today about what is often being called a distraction. Um, like a, a dead cat on the table as Boris Johnson likes to present us with where it's to distract us from Partygate and all the corruption and lies that have gone on there. But I think it's worth talking about this anyway. And that is the proposal to bring back imperial measurements. Now, why is it worth talking about this when it's clearly not going to happen? Well, because basically there are some myths that really need to be dispelled because they're myths that continue to this very day there's people who should know better who genuinely believe that uh, some of this stuff is true when i say this stuff i mean things like crowns on pint glasses and eu banned us doing that they didn't we really need to address lies when they become the front page of the best-selling newspaper in this country and of course i'm talking about the mail on sunday and more widely the eu never banned imperial measurements going back Way before we were even in the EU, the UK itself passed legislation to bring metric in. And why did it do this? Well, because the rest of the world uses metric. And if you're a nation that wants to trade with other nations, it kind of makes sense to use the same measurement system. And people did generally. Anyone in science and engineering would generally use the metric because it's just easier. So the government of the day, being relatively forward thinking, dragged the rest of the country along. Anyone who is educated at any time from 1970 onwards, would have learnt metric at school. So really, when we're talking about imperial, we're talking about a system that most people haven't really ever used. They've used it in the way we all do, you know, sort of feet for height and miles for distance, but they did learn it at school. There are four members of the cabinet, and there's 31 people in the cabinet, who are old enough to have actually used imperial measurements at school. So they're talking about the time which they don't even remember and have no experience of. So very much rose-tinted spectacles saying we should bring it back because they never used it. Most people in the, who are alive today in the UK didn't grow up using Imperial. But onto the wider point, why do people have this feeling that the EU banned it? Because let's face it, all of us can go into town and we can buy a, a quarter pound burger with our pint of beer and we know how many miles it is home. Pints of milk, pints of beer. These are all imperial measurements. There's nobody banning those. You can go into a shop and you can ask for a half pound of apples. They might have to legally, since 2000, list the price in metric units. But there's nothing stopping them also listing the price in imperial if they really need to or feel the need to. So the fact that shops don't suggests that it's not something that customers ask for. So where's this pressure coming from? It's not coming from anywhere, really. It's coming from backbench Tory MPs, average age, about 57, and the older voters. But the, the older voters have coped in this world without imperial measurements for some time now. So it's not like it's a huge pressing issue. I want to touch also on why regulations are important. Some pushback has been, why are the EU telling us that we should have metric measurements on, for example, loose goods like apples and pears and what have you. Well, there's a really good reason why you might want to mandate that there's a common standard used for weights and measures. Because let's say you go into a shop today, you walk into uh, your local supermarket, along the edge of the shelves, there'll be price per 100 grams, price per kilo on all goods. So that means that you as a consumer can look just very quickly along that shelf of Let's say you're looking to buy baked beans. You can see instantly which baked beans are the cheapest, regardless of the size of container, without having to do any mental maths, because along the edge of the shelf, it will say, oh, these beans are you know, 30p per 100 grams, and those ones are 45. You think, well, okay, brilliant. Because even though that can is cheaper because it's smaller, I know that per gram it's more expensive because I can see along the shelf. Brilliant. Before this was a thing, people had to do some fairly reasonably simple but time consuming mental gymnastics to work out what the cheapest price per gram is by getting rid of regulations like that you are taking responsibility away from the wealthy corporations selling us goods and placing it onto the consumers some of whom for no fault of their own may not be the best at maths so by deregulating something that is clearly an advantage for consumers. Why are you doing that? You're not going to, are you? So they say they're going to get rid of these metric um, requirements, but what are they going to replace them with? You can't just say, oh, you don't have to sell things in kilos anymore. 
if you don't then say, well, here is this other common unit you have to sell things in, it's a free for all. If I was selling apples, let's say, and I say, well, I'm going to sell these apples by the bushel or something, I don't know, it could be anything. And there'd be absolutely no requirement for me to say how much they are per kilo or per pound. Then the consumer isn't going to know if they're expensive or cheap. They'll, they could use their judgment. It's just a mess. So it's a good thing that you know per kilo how much the things you're buying are. And if you really want to buy in pounds and you know, stone or whatever, then you can do that. You can go into your shop and say, I'll have a pound of cheese, please, because they'll be able to cope. It's this sort of thing where people get very angry about something that's not true. And they get very strong opinions about bringing things back, which were never taken away. It's a distraction. But to stop it being a distraction, we have to knock it on the head and say, it's not true. And it's not going to happen because business is not going to let the Tory party destroy all this convenient commerce with other countries. Stop believing it's true.